Today I'm gonna set up a tournament to find out the best position in NHL 24. Now I don't mean the best position in EASHL or be a pro, anything like that. I just mean which position has the best players. I went and created an all-star team for the centers, both wingers, and both defenders. I allowed Jabroni to cook, so if there's a player not in the lineup, then you know who to blame. Every team in the tournament will play each other once with the tiebreaker being the goal differential and then head-to-head -head record. The top four teams will advance with the first team playing the fourth, second playing the third, and then we will have our final. If these players do play a different position in real life, that's not my problem because I'm specifically going based on the game. If they are assigned to two positions in the game, then I went based off of their primary. This time I decided to put Marc-Andre Fleury in net for everybody because it's Flower and he's GOAT. Let's jump into the tournament action and see who emerges victorious. The opening contest is between the left defenders and the right wingers. Left defenders showing no mercy from the start, deleting Nikita Kucherov. They would have to stop the play, and upon further review, it was his Tampa Bay made headman. He'd exit the game. Right wings try to rally for their injured squad mate, but Flower manages to halt their first attempt. Then, right before the first period comes to a close, Marner throws the biscuit cross ice to Clayton Keller, who risks home a beauty just underneath the blocker. Directly off the second period draw, all three of the LD forwards swarming the dot, which leaves Fetch to carry the puck in, has it knocked off of him, but then he snaps it home bottom right and nails the knee slide. The pressure continues. Stone tosses the shot on net. Fleury had it in the glove, but lost it on the backswing. Then Marchessault finds Fetch in front for a golden chance. He misses. Charges to get his own rebound over to Stone and a pop fly bat in. What an incredible effort from Svetch. Not done yet. No siree. A triangle passing play ends with Pasta near the goal line. He manages to squeak it in for the 4-0 lead. When it rains, it pours. Clean draw win for Pavs. ADB passes the baton to Stone and let's say howitzer go. LD Flurry having a rough go right now. Defenders of the left variant get a couple chances to break the goose egg, but with a combination of goalpost and flurry, they do in fact get shut out. Huge win for the right wingers. Our next contest is between the right defenders and the left wingers. J-Rob has a breakaway chance for the left wingers just over five minutes in, but he is turned away. On the counter-attack, Bouchard locates Philip Ronick, who would break the ice blocker side. Phenomenal puck movement as the right defenders get a chance to add to their lead, but Mark Casserole says no thanks. Dewey gets sent in with another good chance to pad the team's lead, but he too is rejected. Left wing boys wanting to get some offense going, break the ice themselves. Brack goes cross ice to Gabe Landeskog, he fires a clapper, and how about the hand-eye from Jake Gensel tipping this one past Flower. Second period coming to an end, Drew spinning back, tries to make a play by sending the puck towards the net, but no dice. A 1-1 game going into the third, Charmack springs Dursey, but Fleury keeps it locked. The left wingers trying to end this game in regulation, Ovi gets a slot shot that results in a rebound, and Cap gets a chance on the doorstep to no avail, extra minutes needed. Right out of the gate, Chucky finds himself behind everyone, but slows down for some reason and does not succeed with the TDR attempt. Dobson has a chance to close it at the other end, but Flurry flexes his flexibility. Dobby and the lads keep the pressure going. EK is saved on the first attempt, but Dobson grabs the puck in the corner, offers him a redo, and this time he tucks her home. Big OT dub for the defenders. Centers coming in for their first game against the left defenders. Left defenders with a chance to strike first as Theo goes tape to tape. Norris is streaking in. He is robbed. The centers do strike first as Hins, Thompson, and Steven link up. The backdoor pass is buried. No mistakes made. One zip. Not wanting a deficit after 20. Lefties up the pressure and Vince Dunn tucks it. Low blocker. We're nodded going into two. Quick start for the defenders, Hedman gains the line, then makes a nifty little move, pawns it off to Norrissey, who absolutely threads the needle. Centers wanting to bring this game back to square, but Matthew's shot is saved and a clutch poke check from Flower. Speaking of Flower, hot start in the third, redirecting McDavo's shot to the corner with his blocker. The game would become even, Steven Stamkos with a solid individual effort, walks out of the corner and places it top Chad right above the Tendy's shoulder. 
Now wanting to regain their earlier lead, the Senis formulate a plot, but with a combination of Netminder and Defender putting his body on the line, the game stays tied. Both squadrons would get a chance to close this game in regulation, both fail miserably, and for a second straight game, we are off to OT. Rough start for the defenders. Nady Mac and McDusty, two people you don't want to have on a breakaway. Pass back and forth. The initial shot was saved, but the puck does end up crossing the line. After further review, it was declared to be a kick. We got to keep going. Nate and Dave link up again for a breakaway, but Mark Andre is doing everything he can to get his team this win. One final opportunity for Hughes. Up close and personal, another stellar save. Shootout time. The first two were no good. Darlene, as the third shooter, pulls off a little fake, goes backhand, and gives his team the lead. McDavid is once again stopped by Flower, rent-free at this point. It's actually nutty, leaving Miro with the chance to end this game. Once and for all, he does just that. The Battle of the Wings, right versus left. Not the first time we've seen this. J-Rob adopting baseball yet again, batting home the first goal of the game. He's on one early in this game. Cuts to the middle, misses the shot insanely. Puck bounces and lands on top of the net. Almost two for him. Rantanen did a watch and learn as he cuts to the middle himself. Gives it to Cooch back from injury, but his shot won't go. Nylander gets a chance up close, but his team trails after one. A failed clear from Tuck leads Marchi to feed for Hagi for a 180 no scope, but the score stays. Brad back at it again with a toss over to Forsberg. This time it goes. They double their lead. Deja vu in this highlight. Ranton and spots Captain Cooch once more, and there were no mistakes this time. A nifty little forehand backhand Tuck. Left Boys trying to double their lead again, but a quick glove from Flower prevents such a thing. Right wing goes with a peeper, past the fires a shot that lets out a big rebound, but Ranton and can't get there on time. With time running out, Captain Cooch puts the team on his spine and scores another beauty, this time on the backhand. He has Flurry's number for sure. Brack getting cheeky in the third period, walking the park to the paint and tried to go one-handed. That could have been putrid. Nikita continues to have his name pop up in this one. This time he carries it in the zone, starts a little passing play that allows Willie to win a battle in front and send the puck past a downed flurry. With seven to go, ADB unleashes a one-timer from the blue that beats Mark andre blocker side. Insurance marker has been secured. The captain for the left wing squad wanted to get in on the action scoring with just over three minutes remaining, but that's as close as they would get. Our overtime streak is now broken. We have the central centers against the Rapid City right defenders. Dewey starting us off with a pass back to Charmack, but Flower looking strong early. JT Millstreet able to walk past the defender. Let's go a nasty toe drag, but unfortunately no goal. After a scoreless first period, both squads looking to get something going. McAvoy and Dewey working together. Initial attempt is saved and directed to the corner. Then they get another chance, but still can't solve the netminder. Brutal turnover at the blue line. Another chance for JT, who is traumatized and dishes it off. Gets it back and beats the goalie, but this thing still stays out. Sinny's with yet another breakaway chance. This time it's Hints. He tried a little forehand backhand, but that stops. The attack keeps going. Another great save from a point shot by Leon. Barzal wants a chance from the point, and this one's blocked. Zim catches the pop fly and centers it to Leon for the tap in. We finally have a lead. This is madness. No Sparta. Just four seconds left. The center squad thinks they can make this happen. And how about a Nate McTuck with 0.2 left? Incredible. Defenders wanting to get started quick here in the third. Down by two. McCarr's shot is saved. A very unfortunate poke check from Mark Andre allows John Carlson to scoop up the puck and send it home, cutting the lead in half. Not long after, they have an opportunity to tie it up. Carlson to Carlson. A cheeky five-hole shot finds a way. We are all square in this third period. Centers now on their heels. Give the defenders a power play, and it didn't take long to strike. Charlie bit me. Finally sends one past the goalie, and they now have their first lead. It also appears Charlie may have broken his neck. A minute remaining, Senny's playing from behind for the first time in this game. However, that wouldn't be the case for long as Pappy clutches up, ties the game at three, and sends us off to yet another OT. 
And after tying the game up, AM34 finds Nate Dogg streaking up the middle, clean pass for a clear cut breakaway, and Nathaniel seals the deal with just over 20 seconds remaining in the OT. Battle of the forwards and defenders situated to the left. Landy was unaware the game started. He was still having a yard sale. Gets deleted. Puck finds Hedman for a slot shot, but it's no good. Another chance from a hit. This time, Maury nudged off it. Hyman gets possession, but fumbles the bag, and Gostas Bear is going to make him pay for that mistake. 1-0. Another close call for them as Vinny Dunn passes to the front. Marshy struggles with it. The score remains, however. Zach wants to make up for his earlier mistakes. First shot blocked, second one saved by Flurry. With under a minute left, Theo gains the line and dishes to Captain Quinn, who strips a shot blocker side to extend his team's lead. Things could start getting out of control if the left wingers don't get a grip. Joshua Norrissey feeds Hedman in Flurry's beat low glove. It's now three zip. Hughes with another opportunity from a ghost pass, but not much angle to work with for him. He then goes D to D. Miro takes a shot that appears to be tipped, but the puck meets Irene. Wingies on the peeper in the third period, and they launch an all-out attack. An onslaught, if you might. Marchie's chance is denied. Hags gets one to Felipe, and somehow Fleury's able to get over on time. An all-out Timbits hockey scramble in front of the net. Forsberg and Brad again trying to get anything going, but the blue line shot is gloved down. Under a minute to go in the game, the lads just not wanting to get shut out. They get so close, it hits the post. Fleury swats behind him, and he secures the goose egg. We've got the centers, and we've got the left wingers. McDavo starts off early in this game, carries it over the line, and rips a quick wrister to open the scoring. Fleury got a piece of it, but it wouldn't be enough to stop it. Senny's moving the puck around well. Point, Pedersen, and Hughes got a nice triangle going on, but there was no angle for the shot. Close call for the wingers as Bratt performs a one-knee clapper that is saved by Flurry, but the puck lands on top of the net and grinds it X-game style. Two Panthers have a chance to add a goal, but Reinhardt is saved, and Barkov was too awkward picking up the rebound. Nearing the halfway point of the second period, the lefties finally find the back of the net to tie this game. Kirill the Thrill picks up a loose puck and absolutely roofs it as the Tendi was on the ice. The tie was, however, short-lived because here comes Mick and Mac for the centers. Again, Flurry got his blocker on this, but it snuck through anyway. Left wings down a man, doing their best to ensure this remains a one-goal game, and they escape the second as such. Third period is a different story. Sydney the Kidney over to his partner point. Nice wristy for insurance. Only five minutes remaining, Senny's looking to land the final blow, and it is delivered by the unbelievable hand-eye Tage Thompson puts on display. Perfect placement, Fleury didn't stand a chance. The trailing team would add one more, but at this point, it didn't really matter. Good goal in all Ovi, but it was past due. Another L for the left wingers. It is finally that time for the right-sided battle. Wings out of the gate quick. Cooch over to Miko, directed aside by Flurry. Defenders then show the wingers how to play offense as the tank dishes it to the trailing Burns, who then sends it down to Moritz for a beauty tuck. Burnsy at it again, lets one fly that won't get through. Foxy grabs it, but a great glove stop is made. Then Captain Cooch for the right wing, he's going to leave his mark on this game as well. Sends home a one-timer from Rantanen after a failed clearing attempt was made by the defenders. Flurry had to be sharp off the bat here because the defenders came out ready to play. Dougie one-timer rejected. Wings tender really keeping them in this one with an insane cross crease save, then doubles up with another one-timer stop. Pavs on the charge, unnecessarily kicks it up to himself, and then launches one, stopped by the blocker, all square after two. I feel like we've been seeing this quite a bit, but a shot misses the mark, goes off the glass, and almost wall rides the goalies back into the net. Some excellent puck movement here, and positioning by the right wingers. Cooch to Zook, down to Stone, overtime is needed. In the extra frame, Fox springs kill. Defender for the wingers gets caught flat-footed, but unfortunately for McCarr, Fleury stayed with him. A chance goes the other way. Cooch getting double-teamed. Nylander there for support, sends it to Kairou. His shot lets out a juicy rebound, and who other than Captain Cooch to end this game? Saving the defensive battle for the last game, it's the centers and the right wingers. 
In this penultimate group stage matchup between these two, Fleury is going to set the tone with a ridiculous diving glove save on Connor McDavo. You don't see that every day. What a mad lad. Because of that stop, the righty strike first is passed against the line, slows up, and puts our wrister top corner by the glove of the netminder. Senny's with a close call in the second, as once again the puck decides to go X Games mode on the top of the net. Have yourself a game, Pasta. Give and go between he and Kairou, perfect placement down low, and they'd be up by two heading into the third. This third period does not go in favor for the Senny's whatsoever. McDusto gets tossed out of the game for probably one of the most clean hits I've ever witnessed. And from there it gets ugly and it gets ugly fast. Stoner down low to pass. Flurry got beat and he knew it right away. Defies gravity to stand up in utter defeat. Then Pav shoots again. This one is blocker to the corner. Keller is a good boy and fetches the puck. Over to Svech for the wide open net one timer. And he sallies right in the face of his op as well. The disrespect is genuine. Continuing to pile on. Stone lets a wrist shot go completely undefended. And that is 5-0. Faceoff is won by the wingies, and this guy is a magnet for goals. Nikita Kuj goes far side. Flurry didn't even have time to react. Something finally goes right for the Sennies. Hughes quite literally turns on the Jets, does a little dancey dance, and scores a backhander. Throwing the stick away when you're down 6-1 is kind of crazy. One more pity chance for the Seas, but she won't go. The large lady has sung. A dominating victoire is secured by the wingers of the right variety. With seeding implications, this last game is pretty big for both teams. Right defenders v left defenders, let's get it. Within the first minute, we get the opening goal at the hands of Victor Hedman. He was in the right place at the right time. Wouldn't take long for the righties to respond. Very quick puck movement allows Foxy to rip a slap shot that was misread by Fleury, narrowly missing it with the mitten. Zero shortage of offense in this contest, as Quinn Hughes says, let me grab this lead back real quick. Nice shot. We finally get to see some goaltending. Mo wide open in the slot, but the save is made, then followed up by a big poke check. Very close call for Johnny C. Beats the Tendi, but not the goalpost. Big cooldown compared to the first 20. Couple of chances for the right defenders to tie it up, but they come up short and remain down by a single goal heading into the third. A little bit of goaltending, a little bit of luck. Allows the left defenders to keep this game close. Theo and Vicky, give and go is denied. Then Theo goes on to hit the post. So close, yet so far. Eventually, they do double up though as Dalin is spotted wide open, takes a little clappy, and beats Flurry clean on the glove side. Decorating this cake with just a little bit of icing is Captain Quinn. Three and a half to go. That basically seals the deal right there. Righto's do get one final chance, but it wouldn't have mattered anyway. Let's move on to the elimination stage. Our first elimination contest is a right-sided battle, defenders versus wingers. This guy has just been unbelievable. Kucherov gets the puck in the slot, goes pinging in, 1-0. He almost adds another one very quickly off a pass to pass. Similar play, but from the other side, Nylander goes to Svech and he gets absolutely robbed. Unbelievable save from Fleury as Keller finds Meyer and the rebound is given out, holy smokes. Captain Cooch with yet another chance, Pasta gets it to him in the slot, this time it's saved. Then headed back the other way with the defenders, chance to tie it and John Carlson will do that. He does what Kucherov could not, buries a slot shot in the second. Close call for the right wingers as Svech almost gets teed up but finds Marcheseau in the slot. Shot is taken and Fleury's on the ice scrambling. A battle in front of the net is defended. Then we get an exhibit worthy display of passing behind the back and look at that little give and go but what a save. Tied up, heading into the third here, ranting in. Completely unnecessary, Deke. Finds Kairu back to him, another give and go is saved. Flower is absolutely on one for the defender, saves the cross crease and the rebound. Just over a minute to go, a little scramble behind the net, it almost goes in, puck does come loose, but it stays out. In the extra frame, Dobson goes over to Fox, has it poked off of him, but he ends up finding Kale McCarr all alone in front, they are advancing. The formerly undefeated right-wingers are gone.
Let's find out who is going to be playing the right defenders for the championship. Eckholm with a shorthanded chance early on in this game. Gets a breakaway, goes to the backhand, but Flower denies him. Then we have Sebi Sabster doing some maneuvers up the middle. Finds Matthews who can't get the shot off. The rebound comes out and it meets Irene. Ghost going to get the first good chance for the left defenders. Less one goal, but a big glove save. Scoreless entering the second. Centers on another power play and Nate Mack gets a slot shot to go. It's 1-0. Defenders looking to erase that lead quick. A beautiful shot and a beautiful save. Captain Quinn carrying the puck. Threads the needle between two centers. Finds Sergachev who sends it home to tie this game up going into three. Another breakaway chance for the left defenders. This time it's Vince Dunn and look at the back check on Sidney the Kidney. And not too long after that, Hughes looking to get revenge on his brother and he does with a goal. Throws the twig away and that is going to be all she wrote for this game. They would add an empty netter at the hands of Pedersen. And just like that, we have our final. It's time for the grand finale. First period, Jackery Dackery going in and he feeds the other Jack. And this guy loves throwing a stick away. There must have been a Selly in real life I missed. And this guy is now getting to Kucherov levels of having his name announced in the game. Boom, another goal. This would put the centers up 2 nothing. Not much time left in the first. He didn't throw a stick this time though. A little TDR buzzer beater attempt by Philip Ronick. I respect it. And yet another name I feel like we've been seeing quite a lot. Carlson to Carlson. Johnny C. With another Plinko-styled goal. This guy has been all over the score sheet. The two Oilers, McDavid and Dreisaitl, almost linking up for a 3-1 lead, but no dice. Just over halfway through the game, Dewey's going to send it over to Hronik and another deflection goal. They're either really good at this or really lucky, depending on how you look at it. Bit of a scare for Flurry off the draw here. The center wins it cleanly, and it goes down low to Dewey. A little theatrics there from Flower. Evan Bouchard going to receive the puck. Step around a man and absolutely pocket this one. What a beautiful shot over the right mini wheat under the blocker. Perfection. In the third, delayed penalty for the centers. Kale McCarr receives a pass in the slot, and he tucks this one home. Top corner, beautiful shot. And the centers will get a couple more chances, but believe it or not... That is all she wrote. The right defenders are your champions. Well played.